One of the ways is to think more about your external environment than your internal environment. A lot of times what happens when you are nervous is that you start thinking about your heart racing, you start thinking about your sweating, you start thinking that you're stuttering over your words and then it just kind of snowballs into this effect. What is up fam? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. and this is Phil's Guide to PsyD. This channel is dedicated to all things psychology, wellness, and graduate school. Today we're going to be talking about one special interview tip that I want to give you guys, especially for those of you who are getting ready for the clinical psychology interviews. You might be a little nervous or maybe a lot nervous. And one of the things that's really nerve wracking about those interviews is that once you get into those interviews and you're at the program and you're answering the questions, you can get really nervous, you can get really tight, and that is completely normal, especially for those of you who have multiple interviews, you will find that the first interview that you go to is not that great, but then your second or your third is a lot better because you're a lot more comfortable, you're a lot more confident, and you're a lot more uh, less into yourself rather than the first time. And so in this video, I'm gonna just teach you guys a basic skill that I think might be helpful for you as you are going through your clinical psychology interview. Whenever you feel nervous, whenever you feel like you're lost for words, this might be something that you might take into consideration as you're going into. One of the ways is to think more about your external environment than your internal environment. A lot of times what happens when you are nervous is that you start thinking about your heart racing, you start thinking about you're sweating, you start thinking that you're stuttering over your words and then it just kind of snowballs into this effect of you feeling like you're not really doing your best. And that is part of the reason why we can be so internally focused into our own selves rather than being focused on what's going on around us. So one of the best things that has been taught to me is actually just focusing on your external environment. While you are going through that interview process, notice the color of the desk, notice the lights in the room, notice the person and what they're wearing. Try and be as much externally focused as you can and that way that'll bring a lot more of your authentic side of yourself as you're going through that interview with that person. Once again, nervousness is one of those snowballing effects that we focus on ourselves, we focus on our heart racing, we focus on what's going on inside of us, and then we lose sight of what's actually going on on the outside. And so if you can notice other people's body language or notice other people's tone or notice what other people are saying or just be focused more on the external environment than your internal environment, that can really help you for these interviews to kind of get a better sense of really calming down, focusing on yourself without actually focusing on yourself and really just give your best output in terms of the energy, in terms of answering the questions and really doing your best. You wanna practice with somebody and making sure that you're practicing or rehearsing some of those questions to get more familiar with them, but you also want to see if you can kind of be more externally focused as well. Being able to get in touch with your body, so whether it's breathing, and whether it's even actually having some type of physical sensation. And so a lot of times people will clench their fist, but I think what's really helpful is to actually grab your thumb. And you can do this as you're sitting down. Obviously, I'm actually grabbing my thumb and you can't even notice because the camera is only just showing my face. But typically in an interview, people are only gonna be focused on your face. They may not be necessarily focused on your hands. And so especially if you're doing a virtual interview, all you have to do is squeeze your thumb as you're giving certain responses. Squeezing your thumb is kind of a connection from your mind to your body in terms of recognizing if there is some tension within your body. And by squeezing your thumb and kind of releasing it, you can kind of remind yourself subconsciously to kind of relax release that tension and to let go of it at the same time. And so that's one of the things that might be helpful for you. There's a lot of people when they do speeches or when they do talks or presentations, they will do those similar formulations of that as well. So that's just a little bit of a psychology trick. Two things, remember to really try and be more externally focused really be mindful of what that person is wearing, what that person is doing, what that person is saying, rather than being more focused on yourself. 
And then the other thing is that if you can try and connect your thoughts, your emotions, your mind back to your body and try and have a little bit more attunement to your body by squeezing your thumb or squeezing your finger or whatever it is, that way that could also be a subconscious sort of a anchoring moment to help you focus and stay in the moment in terms of actually how to answer that question. So hopefully those are two tips that you guys can take with you that can be helpful for you as you are going through your clinical psychology interviews. And I know you guys will do great. I know you will do a fantastic job. Just be yourself, be attuned to yourself, and you will be in great shape. I know that for sure, all right? So if you guys have any questions, put it down in the comment section below. If you have not already, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I will see you guys in the next video.